From Nile to Blood, the extraordinary first plague in Egypt's history, the first of the ten plagues in the book of Exodus. Where water turns to blood, is a profound and impactful event that underscores God's power, and the unfolding narrative of the Israelites' deliverance from Egypt. As the story goes, Moses and Aaron, acting as God's messengers, approached Pharaoh to demand the release of the Israelites. However, Pharaoh remained obstinate, refusing to heed their request despite witnessing Aaron's staff transforming into a serpent. In response to Pharaoh's refusal, God initiated a series of plagues to demonstrate his authority and power over Egypt's gods and elements. The first plague involved turning the water of the Nile River and all water sources in Egypt into blood. This was not merely a symbolic act. It was a tangible manifestation of divine intervention. The Nile River, revered by the Egyptians as a source of life, fertility, and sustenance, became undrinkable and unfit for use. The water in vessels and containers throughout the land also transformed into blood. This plague had far-reaching consequences beyond the immediate scarcity of potable water. The account of the water turning into blood holds multiple layers of significance. Firstly, it highlighted the power differential between the Egyptian gods and the one true god of the Israelites. The Nile River was considered sacred in Egyptian religion, associated with the deity Happy, the god of the Nile and fertility. By turning the Nile into blood, God displayed his supremacy over the perceived forces of nature and the gods of Egypt demonstrating that he alone held authority over creation. Secondly, this plague was a direct response to Pharaoh's hardness of heart and refusal to acknowledge God's demand for the release of the Israelites. However, Pharaoh's heart remained hardened, and he did not relent, leading to subsequent plagues. Additionally, the plague of blood sets the stage for the escalating intensity and severity of the plagues that followed. Each plague intensified the impact on Egypt and its people illustrating the consequences of defying God's will and refusing to let the Israelites go. Moreover, the narrative underscores the contrast between the treatment of the Israelites and the Egyptians. While the Israelites were spared from this plague, having access to clean water in the land of Goshen where they dwelled, the Egyptians suffered the repercussions of Pharaoh's stubbornness. The account of the water turning to blood in Exodus chapter 7 verse 14 25 is a pivotal moment in the biblical narrative of the Israelites' exodus from Egypt. It serves as a demonstration of God's power, his ability to assert authority over the elements, and his unwavering commitment to fulfilling his promises to his people. Furthermore, it invites contemplation on themes of obedience, consequences of stubbornness, and the implications of defying divine authority. The narrative challenges individuals to reflect on the significance of acknowledging and responding to God's directives, as well as the potential repercussions of resisting his will. Ultimately, the first plague of water turning to blood was a foundational event that set the stage for subsequent developments in the story of the Israelites' liberation from bondage, showcasing God's sovereignty and his determination to free his chosen people. The first plague in Exodus chapter 7 verse 14, where water turns into blood, stands as a watershed moment in the story of the Israelites' exodus from Egypt. It symbolizes divine authority, and serves as a prelude to a series of supernatural events, aimed at compelling Pharaoh to release the enslaved Israelites. Moses and Aaron confronted Pharaoh, urging him to free their people. Yet, Pharaoh, unmoved despite witnessing Aaron's staff transform into a serpent, remained obstinate. In response, God initiated a demonstration of power that challenged Egypt's beliefs in gods. The Nile River, revered as a life-giving force, was turned to blood, an act that disrupted daily life and struck at the heart of Egyptian faith. This transformation wasn't merely symbolic. It had far-reaching consequences. The Nile's contamination affected agriculture, a cornerstone of Egypt's economy, and rendered water undrinkable, causing widespread distress. This plague was a direct challenge to the Egyptian pantheon, showcasing the supremacy of the God of Israel over perceived forces of nature. It aimed to dismantle Pharaoh's belief in the might of Egypt's gods, and underline the true authority of the divine. 
Despite warnings, Pharaoh's heart remained hardened. His refusal to acknowledge God's demand led to subsequent plagues, each intensifying the suffering and demonstrating the consequences of resisting divine will. The differentiation between the treatment of the Israelites and the Egyptians during this plague highlighted God's protection over his people. While the Egyptians suffered, the Israelites were spared, enjoying clean water in the land of Goshen. This plague set the stage for the dramatic unfolding of events. It was a strategic step in God's plan, emphasizing the cost of resistance and the unwavering determination to liberate his people. Each subsequent plague was a calculated move towards justice and freedom. Moreover, this event prompts reflection on obedience and consequences of stubbornness. It challenges individuals to consider the significance of acknowledging and responding to divine directives, emphasizing the repercussions of defying divine authority. The account of water turning to blood underscores God's sovereignty, his power over creation, and his commitment to fulfilling promises. It remains a poignant testament to the cost of disobedience and the lengths to which God would go to secure the freedom and deliverance of his chosen people. Ultimately, the first plague of water turning into blood was foundational. It stands as a powerful reminder of divine authority and the eventual triumph of the oppressed.